Hello and welcome to my channel called Statistics from A to Z, Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name, which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos, please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. In inferential statistics, we don't have all the data from a population or process, so we perform statistical tests on a sample or samples of data. The two main methods of inferential statistics are hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. And there are four statistical concepts which are at the heart of inferential statistics. Alpha, the level of significance, P, the p-value, critical value, and test statistic. In the book, there are individual articles on each of these four concepts, and I have also made four individual videos. If you're not confident that you have a good intuitive understanding of one or more of these concepts, it may be useful to watch those videos before this one. On the other hand, it's perfectly fine to start with this video and then view the other videos as needed. In the book, we use different types of creative graphics to try to convey a better understanding of concepts. I call this a type a concept flow diagram. I'll go through this piece by piece, but briefly, the horizontal arrows show how one concept leads to another. For example, as we'll explain, the concept of alpha, together with the test statistic distribution, leads to the critical value. And the vertically listed bullets on the left and right show the similarities between the two concepts on the left, alpha and the p-value, and the similarities between the two concepts on the right, critical value and test statistic. So on this one page, you have the essential facts about these four concepts at the heart of inferential statistics. And you can see how they interrelate and work together. And this is a compare and contrast table. It contains the same information as the concept flow diagram on the previous page, but it organizes that information differently. Different people may relate better to one or the other type of graphic. Again, I'll explain this piece by piece. Note that each of the two graphics convey a very large amount of information on a single page. On either of these two pages, you have the essential information on what each of these four concepts are and how they interrelate. I've not seen anything else like these one-pagers in any other book, video, or website. Let's start with the left side of the concept flow diagram. At the top and the bottom are two graphs. These are close-ups of the right tail of the curve of the test statistic distribution. T is the test statistic in this example. We see that alpha and P are the same kind of thing. They are cumulative probabilities. That is, they are probabilities of the range of values starting with the vertical line boundary and continuing rightward to infinity. Cumulative probabilities are graphed and calculated as the area under the curve of that range of values. Alpha and P are compared with each other to determine the outcome of a hypothesis test. If P is less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. If P is greater than alpha, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. In the upper box, it says that alpha is selected by us. The person, the person who performs the test selects the value for alpha. An alpha error is a false positive. It is the error of concluding that there is a statistically significant difference change or effect when, in reality, there is not. P is the probability of an alpha error. Alpha is the highest value for P, which the tester is willing to tolerate and still call the difference change or effect statistically significant. To see how the value of, of P is calculated, we'll need to wait for the right side of this concept flow diagram and the explanation of the test statistic. And here is the same information presented in a compare and contrast table. Alpha and P are cumulative probabilities. 
They are each pictured as an area under the curve of the distribution of the test statistic. The value of alpha is selected by the tester, and the value of alpha is compared with p, and the value of p is compared with the value of alpha. The test results are considered statistically significant, and we reject the null hypothesis if p is less than or equal to alpha. Note the blank cells in the table. We'll need information from the other two concepts in order to fill those in. Here is the right side of the concept flow diagram. To illustrate, we'll use t as our test statistic. It is one of four commonly used test statistics. The others are z, f, and chi-square. The two concepts here are the critical value, t critical in our example, and the test statistic value, t. They are the same kind of thing. They are numbers which represent points on the horizontal axis of the test statistic distribution curve. T, t critical and t are compared with each other. You re will recall that the two concepts on the left side, alpha and p, are also the same kind of thing, but they are a different kind of thing. They are cumulative probabilities represented as areas under the curve. This is the same information now entered into the uh, compare and contrast table. The critical value and the test statistic values are both values of the test statistic. They are pictured as points on the horizontal axis of the distribution of the test statistic. They are compared with each other. If the test statistic value is greater than or equal to the critical value, then we conclude that any difference, change, or effect observed in the sample data is statistically significant, and so we reject the null hypothesis. And here is how the two concepts at the top, alpha and critical value, interrelate. We're using t as our test statistic in this example, and the test is one-tailed, right-tailed. After we select a value for alpha, it can be plotted as an area under the curve of a tail of the probability distribution of the test statistic. Pictured as a close-up of the right tail of the curve, alpha is the shaded area under the curve. Given this information, the test determines, determines the value of the point which marks the boundary of the shaded area. This is the critical value, t critical in this example. So as it says in blue, alpha and the test statistic distribution determine the critical value and the critical value marks the boundary of the shaded area representing alpha. And here we've entered the same information into the compare and contrast table. The critical value marks the boundary for the area under the curve representing alpha. To complete the concept flow diagram, here is how the two concepts at the, at the bottom, p and test statistic, interrelate. The value of the test statistic, t, is calculated from the sample data. The formula for this calculation varies with the test statistic and the type of test. This calculated value of t is plotted on the horizontal axis of the probability distribution of the test statistic. Then, the area under the curve beyond t is calculated. This is the cumulative probability p, the p-value. It is pictured as a hatched area under the curve beyond t. In here, the same information completes the compare and contrast table. Let's start with the blue items in the rightmost column. The value of the test statistic is calculated from sample data. This point value t is plotted on the horizontal axis of the test statistic. It marks the boundary of the area under the curve representing p. This area is then calculated to be the p-value. Okay, that's it for our clarification of this confusing concept. If you liked this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button <clears throat> on your screen below. I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me that more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfromazz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. 
Now videos like this one can be very helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying, while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. I'd recommend following my blog at statisticsfromazcom slash blog. I've got some things there that hopefully you will find interesting, like a statistics tip of the week series, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you are confused by statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter as at stats A to Z, 